Dave from DNA Reptilia, we got eggs. What we have here is our only our second clutch of eggs for this year so far i think i got maybe two maybe three other females uh that may give us eggs it looks like they're uh fairly small and about ready for ovulation so but that's at a later time they're usually later egg layers anyways so but what we're gonna have here is our pastel calico um this is the third clutch of eggs that she has given us and she was paired up to our pastel candy from r &L Exotics that we got, oh geez, years ago when they were at r &L Exotics. I only paired up two times. I mean, they're both locks, 10-16 uh, and 11-17. Uh, that's all it took. And we're March 16th right now. That's how long it took too sometimes. Let's get her out and see what she gave us. Wow, I didn't think she had this. It. Holy cow. Ooh, nearly. Gave me more than what I thought she was gonna give us. It's always a good idea to check your females, bring your finger down their belly, even if they're curling. Make sure that they are empty and that there is no stuck eggs. And after that, I have some water prepped here that's at 90 degrees with just a drop of Dawn dish soap in it. And she's not going to like this because they never do. What the Dawn dish soap is going to do is help get the egg smell off of her so when I put her back in this tub she doesn't think that she's on eggs anymore and I'll be doing a full clean on this tub to actually remove the egg scent from the tub. What she gave us is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six eggs. From a smaller female, even though she's this is her third clutch, she's not a big 3,000 grammer, she is it's only about 1,800 grams, 2,000 around that mark so she was a she is a smaller female trust me I got females that are tub crackers which are over 3,000 grams so <laughs> can't wait for them to lay eggs and it's probably gonna be 10 but six eggs out of a 2,000 gram girl it's good I'm happy with it I really didn't want to create too many more het candies that I may need yeah, I'm hoping to actually hit, but if I don't, I may try again. Um, what I am actually trying for is a calico male. I would, um, I've seen what calico does in lavender albino, which is insane. And I would like to try to create that with candy. Pastel candy to pastel calico. So yes, there is a possibility I can make a super pastel calico super pastels, pastels, calicos, and normals. But they're all head candy. The odds are in my favor to make pastels. It'd be nice if I hit a pastel calico, male, female, I wouldn't care. If I hit a really nice looking female, it may be a keeper, but I prefer it to actually be a male. All right, we gotta get these eggs going. prepped my tub already I already asked the little lady in the box what the um, due date is it'll be May 17th and I'll write on there pastel candy to pastel 
Calico. So I should have a good idea what I'm getting on here. You can't get these shoe boxes anymore, unfortunately. But I'm gonna keep digging. You never know, someone else might grab the patent to the mold or whatnot like that and start making them. But anyways, for right now, these boxes are not being made. They're awesome boxes. I just wish I could get them again. But I put perlite in here and three cups of warm water to help warm it up right away. So when I put the eggs in here, they're already going to start getting more heat, you know, from in there. Um, I am using the Easy Hatch trays. They're great for when you are actually able to pull the eggs apart. You're able to put them in here so they don't roll around, which is really nice. I was using egg crate before and straws and Q-tips and stuff. That's a mess and it's annoying. You gotta add different things into there and create more things to possibly have mold and it was... Get the easy hatch trays, especially if you plan on doing this for a couple years out. These will pay for themselves. Now when I say I put three cups of water in here, that's it. I literally put three cups. I measured out three cups of three cups of water. That seems to be working great in these tubs for me. For you, it may be too much, but you really can't have too much unless it's at, the water is actually touching the eggs. But you could also put in too little and it would all completely evaporate. And if you have too much air movement with inside your tub, you could evaporate all the water and then your eggs are completely dehydrate. So keep track of how much water you put in your tubs and put the same amount in it every time, you'll have great results. I know I had a sign on her tag or a sign on her tub that said egg watch. Last time I checked was like three days ago. So these could be up to three days old. So I'm not 100% sure if I can remove these eggs at all. They do seem pretty firm. So this might be, let's see. Great, they don't touch the top. Now, if the eggs touch the side of the, of the tub at all, that's usually where the moisture con condensates and it would actually wick onto the egg and the egg could drown actually because it would be wicking in all that water and that's not a good thing. Your egg will be ballooned and yeah, just, it's not a good thing. So if you do have to put your eggs in your egg box at how they lay, how, how they're laid is how they stay. How they lay is how they stay. Some people do that, some people break them apart. These have probably uh, been in her tub for at least three days. So, and the eggs are fairly firm. I don't feel confident in my skills to be able to pull these eggs apart so I can have them individualized. Now that I get the eggs set aside, now it's your basic full clean of the tub, new water, full scrub down, soap and water, soap and spray, disinfectant, you name it, the whole, just do a full clean on the tub. Now, after I get all the chips out there, there's times where I'll use a plastic scraper from Menards. You can get a three pack with different widths for about two or three bucks. You know, it helps, but the urate, sometimes you still will get it stuck. But these are so cheap, if you break them, they're easy enough to replace. We'll Dawn dish soap and some F10, mix it in with some water. You're gonna put it in the spray bottle. Make sure you get a good spray bottle. It took me a while to find some spray bottles that are actually good, but the Zep spray bottles actually, but the Zep spray bottles actually do last.
Stage two is done. Tub was clean, new fresh water, new rep to chip in there, you name it, it's ready to go for her. Now I just have to wipe her down, do another inspection as she goes into the tub that I just hit. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, that was only our second clutch of eggs for the year. As I said previously, I did do some pairing this year. I paired about five girls this year, which out of how many that I have, that's not a whole lot. But the main reason for that is I wanted to make sure that my radry was still capable of producing fair amount of uh, rats. You know, I still wasn't 100% confident when I started doing pairing, um, but I was confident enough that I could um, sustain at least eight, or eight to ten clutches of uh, eggs worth of snakes, you know, with the rattery, how it was going. And I wish I would have paired more because the rattery is actually doing very well now. It wasn't because of the ball python market or anything like that, it was because food supply. I was not as confident in the food supply. But next year, that's a completely different story. I'll be doing pairings of girls that I created. 